or not to be is not the question. Einstein was reported to say, if the bees, the honeybees were lost to us, we would have four more years to live. He never said that. When you come to a conference like TED, it's good to have an open mind. But Jacob Needleman once said, it's good to have an open mind, but not so open that your brains fall out. We need to balance new ideas with also the critical capacity to look at them. But the bees are very important. In Manitoba, we export approximately 6 million kilograms of honey every year. The value of the pollinators, and it's not just honey bees, it's also leafcutter bees and other bees in Canada, is around, oh, about $2 billion. Some people say $3 billion. Around the world, according to the latest UN report, the value of pollinators was estimated worldwide every year at approximately $200 billion. 71 of the top 100 crops that we eat are pollinated by bees and other insects. There's been a lot of talk about colony collapse disorder and the disappearance of bees, and the latest fad is the zombies. And we are losing bees. But to be or not to be is not the question. Richard Saul Werman, in Information Anxiety, stated that his expertise came from his ignorance. It stemmed from his not knowing. And that his questions were more important than his answers. His questions were more important than his answers. Richard Saul Werman, in 1984, had the idea for a convergence of technology, education, and design. And that's what I would like to do, is to look at a convergence of technology, computers, iPads, smartphones, education, meaning not just learning about honeybees, but significantly learning from honeybees. And design is how do we bring that together so that the two are fused as one. So as I said at the start, my background is employee engagement. Sometimes people see employee engagement as the workplace trying to suck more work out of you. That's not how I see it. It's how we connect to our work, how we connect to each other, and what's going on. I was working with a provincial government department about 10 years ago. We were talking about the structure. The minister, the deputy ministers, or ADMs, the directors, the managers, and it just kind of flowed through, and it was a classic pyramid. But Debbie, Debbie was at the front of the, the class, and Debbie is a doodler. And uh, this is what Debbie doodled. And I looked at that, and I said, my God, Debbie, you've, you've drawn the best organizational chart I've ever seen. <laughs> it's, it's the real organization. It's how it, how it really appears to me. And then I got involved in working with bees. I'm not a beekeeper. I'm not a scientist. At best, I'm a bee convener. I, I'd like to convene humans and honeybees together for the mutual benefit of both. And I, I stuck a couple of computers in hives. You can see them up on the stage. I, I stuck a couple of computers in hives last summer just to see what would take place. And I looked and I said, that's the same as the organizational chart that I just showed you. Except as a dead metaphor, it's a living metaphor. And how do bees organize their community? How do bees accomplish things? How do bees do things? And what might, make, what might that mean for us? What if? What if our organizations were run like hives? And what if our organizations could return the gifts that the bees have given us between pollination and honey? How would that unfold? So it began a three-act play, lifting the lid, penetrate the darkness, and build the hive. <sighs> lifting the lid. Lifting the lid is not always easy. I mean, it, it seems easy to do, but but it's fraught with difficulties. And with bees, it's hard because they, they glue that lid together with propolis. They, they, they put it down. And we have that old, that old analogy back to, to, to lifting the lid and Pandora's box. What if we open that lid and out comes all these terrible things and the only thing left in it is hope? I was afraid to lift the lid. 
This is a bit of a journey from fear to fascination. And hopefully where I don't end up with is getting fixated on, on honeybee factoids. There's a bazillion facts about bees. And, and for some reason, people get very obsessed with that. So if you're going to lift the lid, it's really important that you have two, uh, some guides to, to help you through the process. There's my two guides. Phil Veldhaus is a beekeeper near Starbucks, Manitoba. Phil is also a philosophy professor at the University of Manitoba. Phil's master's thesis was on bees, brains, and behavior. It's not easy to read. It's a philosophy, master's thesis, but I tried to read it. And no disservice to Phil, but he really said, do bees think? And he answered, they show intention, but they don't show consciousness or self-consciousness. There's not evidence for that. Wait a minute, when you look at how bees communicate, they communicate with something called a waggle dance. So what they do, and I'll try to simulate this a bit, <laughs> is they kind of go like this through the hive, and then they come around again, and then they kind of go like this through the hive, and all the other bees are kind of around and watching it. And at a moment like that, when you're dancing as a bee, you don't want self-consciousness. You, you don't want to think, does my thorax look a little large? <laughs> so intention is good. And sometimes when we uh, launch on lifting our own lids and, and engaging in our projects, we might have a little bit too much self-consciousness. The other person in the picture is Agonitha Dick, a very close, uh, the, the wife of my close friend Peter Dick, and we've been involved for 15, 20 years, and he's mentored me. And, and I became interested in Agonitha and her work. There's, uh, there's one piece of Agonitha's work called Pivot. Uh, it's one of my favorite pieces. Agonitha has been working with bees for 20 years. We've been getting together for breakfast the last few years and talking about the connections between the workplace and engagement and the honeybees. Agonitha is fascinated by the world of the small. And I think in our workplaces, we have to look at small. I was in Tucson, and, and one person said to me, we've gone in our workplaces from doing more with less to doing everything with nothing. We need to look at how we work together with that. Agonitha has engaged bees for 20 years. If you can engage a honeybee, surely in our workplaces we can engage each other. Agonitha co-creates her art with the bees. She has a stamp. And it's not like she just throws objects in hives and, and out they come. There's, there's a back and forth. But one time, Agonitha and I are having breakfast together. And she said to me, David, the, the hive is a very dark place. And I said, yeah, I know, Agonitha, the, the bees are in the dark. No, she said, behavior. Agonitha loves bees, much like I love bees too, but there is a dark side. There's a picture of the queen. She's kind of the bigger bee. You don't last as long as Queen Elizabeth, 60 years. Your rule is maybe three years. You lay about 1,500 eggs a, a day. It's, it's kind of a thankless job. And you've got all these bees around you kind of looking after you. It looks, oh, isn't that nice? Attendance. But they're also monitoring you. If you stop doing your job, if you stop doing their job, they get you busy and, and make some new queens. And those are all your daughters. Talk about difficult mother-daughter relationships. <laughs> and then uh, when the new queen is ready to come on board, they, they tell you to leave. And if you don't go, the statement that sometimes used is, the bees will cook you. They'll swarm around the queen, they'll build up the heat with their wings and kill the queen. And then the new queen comes on board. There is some dark behavior. Thomas Hobbes said that life is nasty, brutish, and short. A, no a normal honeybee only li lives about 45 days. And there's, there's lots of difficulty. So as much as I love bees, and as much as I love the workplace... There's positive and negative. There's both sides that take place. Unless you think, boy, that's pretty tough to be a female in a hive. The drones don't have a great life. At, the, at fall, they just get dumped if they're not productive. The queens just chase them out of the hive. And if they're lucky enough to mate with a queen bee, it's three seconds and then their penis falls off. <laughs> so it's, it's, not a, it's not a brilliant life. But I'm looking at how we build our hives, how we come together. What can we not learn about bees, but what can we learn from bees? 
And so my work is taking place at Phil's Apiary near Starbucks, Manitoba. Those are very small grain elevators near Starbucks. They're so cute. And so I thought it would be nice to have coffee with, with the bees. And if you're going to Starbucks, you don't have Tim Hortons. So I, I brought the bees a, a Starbucks mug, this exact mug. And uh, those of you in branding, and there's a number of you here, know that Starbucks opened up their brand. Your brand isn't just your logo, it's what people say about you. you you've got to give social and, and elements to that. And they opened up the brand, and, and the bees decided that they would build an edible handle. And the bees, the bees obviously love honey in their coffee. They, they filled the cup. And then the bees built the Patronus Towers, one of the towers, right inside the cup. Gaudi, from Barcelona, was fascinated with the architecture of the bees. And if you've ever been to Barcelona and seen his work, his legacy from learning about bees and their architecture is very powerful. So what can we bring with social architecture? What are we famous for in Manitoba? Before a couple gets married, you rent a place like Norbury Community Club and you have a social. And you bring the two families together and there's drinking and partying and things going on. And I thought, let's have a Manitoba social. And the social will take place inside the hive. 50,000 bees could possibly be there. There's not enough room for all of us physically. And then there's dangers that people could get stung or something else could happen. So there's three goals, is to be social. A lot of you are on Twitter and, and Facebook and LinkedIn and Google Plus and the latest platform. There's a social element going out here. There's cross-pollination. We're number nine in Canada on Twitter trends. To think differently inside our hives. To learn from bees, not about bees. And then ultimately, mutual benefit as we learn from bees to offer something back to them. So, how do you enter the hive? You can enter the hive through Facebook or other platforms. There'll be kind of more information as this unfolds. You can go into the hive. You can tweet the bees. You can uh, update the bees. You can Google Plus the bees. There'll be some video output, some sound output, and some other factors. I'm asking you to think differently. But not just to think differently, but, but to act differently. Richard Saul Werman said that his expertise came from his questions, not from his answers. I don't know, I don't know exactly how this un will unfold. I don't know exactly what we'll learn from this project. But I know the honeybees have given us so much. And I think it's not just physical. I don't think it's just pollination. I don't think it's just honey. I think they offer a model as our world has gone that all of us, are social workers. We don't have to take an MSW or a BSW. We're social workers. And not just social media workers, but social in a variety of ways. The old pyramid structures of the past are long gone. And we haven't quite figured out what replaces them, but I think the hive is certainly a step in the right direction. So, just in conclusion, I was saying to Agonitha, I said, of course, you know, I, when I put these computers in the hive, I don't expect the bees to text. Although we got one bee on there, it's not quite enough weight. And Agonitha said to me, they can text. And I know enough when Agonitha says something, I better listen. And uh, she uh, showed me a project that she did in Burnaby. And uh, there was some display in Burnaby. And she took some metal plates and went to a punch press and had the letters taken out and put it into the hive, and of course the bees filled in the space. They filled in the space. And the bees created text. Yeah, you may need to give them structure. And I don't expect that the bees are, are going to see the world from a human perspective. Obviously that's not going to take place. But I think the bees can offer us very much a living metaphor, and if we're losing so many bees, it's of great concern, perhaps there's things that we can give back to them along the way with that. So what I'd like to do is to invite you to think differently inside your hives, to be social, 
and that's an idea we're spreading. Thank you very much.